So good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming to this presentation. So my name is Marie Julie, and uh, I work for Action Against Hunger, which is an international NGO uh, that basically try to decrease hunger in the world. So we help uh, lots of people uh, in 47 countries, and we have a team of 8,000 humanitarian professionals that work with us. So this talk will be on West Africa. Um, and on a disaster risk reduction uh, project. So the title of the talk is Real-Time Mapping with SMS Where There Is No Internet. So the project takes place uh, in the West African Sahel. So this is just below the Sahara uh, Desert, uh, where the pastoralism is a really important uh, sector. So basically, African Sahel, it's huge territories uh, that goes from Senegal to Chad uh, that are characterized with very low precipitation. Um, there is high variability uh, in terms of precipitation, both in spatial and temporal uh, aspects. And basically, the rainy season starts in June or uh, July and ends up in October. So we have also a high seasonality of the vegetation. Uh, and in this region, the pastoralism is uh, really important because it's uh, often the only source of income uh, for the population. So uh, it's, uh, yeah, it plays a key role in the food security system. So uh, the herders uh, really depends on two main resources that are uh, pasture and water to feed their animals. So at ECF, we've built a pastoral early warning systems. Uh, the goal of this system is to improve the response capacity to food and nutrition crisis uh, in pastoral and aquapastoral uh, livelihoods regions. So the history started in 2003, uh, where we started to do biomass uh, measurements in the north of Mali. Uh, then in 2007, uh, we start to monitor biomass with satellite imagery. So that's really the starting point of the pastoral early warning system. Then in 2014, we launched the, the field data collection to complete uh, this pastoral early warning system. In 2017, uh, we started uh, an interactive web platform to publish our data and now, so in 2019, we added on the web platform all the field data collection. So how does this pastoral early warning system works? So we follow two main resources that are uh, grass, so pasture and water, with two technologies, so satellite and uh, data collection uh, with SMS. So every 10 days, we acquire new satellite imagery that are incorporated in our systems. And every week, we do a survey on the fields uh, so to collect field data. And at the end, we analyze and summarize all this information and transmit it to our end user, which are the states, uh, international organization, but also pastoral communities. So first, uh, satellites provides us with uh, biomass and water uh, anomalies. So those are two maps uh, from the 22 of August, so this year, uh, seven days ago. Uh, we, you can see on the left the biomass anomaly, so the, the grass anomalies, and on the right the water anomalies. So I will not go into details because this is not the, the main topic of the, of the talk, but just uh, when it's green. When it's wet, it's bad, so it means that we have uh, less biomass than usual. And we, when it's green, it's good, so we have more biomass than usual. Um, and this is based on Probavi and spot vegetation data. Uh, it's delivered at one kilometer special resolution and updated every 10 days on uh, our platforms. So just to, to have a quick update of the situation right now, so our, we are really uh, anxious about the situation in Senegal and Mauritania because uh, a uh, big drought uh, occur and when we look at the at the profile of the vegetation we have like two months delay uh, in the start of the growing season so even if the rain started now so in Senegal it started to rain but we are not sure that this is catchable because it's really really a big delay so we are getting ready for response and uh, emergency actions. So satellite imagery are 
are good. Uh, they are great. They give like a, an overview of the of the region, but uh, something cannot be seen from space. So, for example, we don't we cannot have information about uh, if the biomass is eatable by the animals or not. We cannot know if it's accessible. Uh, for example, if there is conflicts or something like that, we don't know that, and we don't know about the water quality. So satellite imagery are not sufficient, so we need to build um, a field data collection uh, system. And uh, we need to do it in a simple way, so it's uh, really uh, low cost and also easily usable. Uh, and we, when we started to build this uh, automatic uh, collection data on the fields, we faced an issue, which is uh, low internet connection in Africa. So as you may see on, on the map, uh, that showed the percentage of the population using internet. So it's still quite low in Africa, uh, and especially in the remote areas where uh, we work and uh, with the moving population, because uh, all this population moves with their animals, so it's not easy. So we build a, a, a survey method based on uh, automatic SMS gateway server, that's Telerivet. So this is the only non-open source uh, software that we use because we, we have to pay for this, um, but it's not expensive. And uh, this allows us to, to do survey with SMS, um, automatic survey uh, using this system. So every week uh, we have like 109 uh, data collectors that uh, answer to the survey. So they send information about, for example, biomass availability, water availability, uh, and so on. So they, yeah, they just send SMS, and then we analyze that. And every two months, we publish bulletins, and uh, we also publish maps on the web. So that this information I use, for example, by WFP or by FAO in the region to know uh, what to do. So. Just to go a bit more into details, uh, so we have the, the Telerivet server, and then we have one smartphone in each country that is connected to internet. So we need this smartphone uh, to do the link between the server and the sending of the SMS. So each Thursday, so it's today, uh, it's like the survey day, so the server just send a request to the smartphone, and then the smartphone start to send SMS to the data collectors that are on the fields and that don't have any access uh, to, to internet. So the, confer the, like, the conversation looks like the smartphone asks what's the biomass availability, uh, type one, if it's very sufficient, two, if it's sufficient, etc. Then the, the data collector just send two, and automatically the system send back the next SMS and so on. You can also like uh, pre, yeah, some, some, some question can come automatically. So for example, if they answer yes, at the question, do you observe death uh, of animal, then we will ask if yes, what's the cause of the death and so on. Um, so at the end, we are able to build that kind of map. So for each data collector that is uh, located at a specific place, we have the information of, for example, biomass availability. So we can say, uh, yeah, we can have a, a map like that and we can compare it to our satellite imagery to see if, it goes in the same direction or not. Uh, so we use this data to also publish um, national and regional bulletins uh, every two months. And so this, these bulletins are published on sixahel.info, which is uh, our website, and it's validated by uh, national states. And uh, it's used, for example, for the identification uh, of food and nutrition in secure regions in the Sahel. Um, Field data is also published on our web platform, so it's geocell.info. Um, so the satellite imagery is updated, uh, are updated sorry, every 10 days, and the field data are updated every two months. So all is open source and uh, accessible, so you can just go to the site and download the, the data. We, of course, also publish it on HDX, which is the Humanitarian Data Exchange. Uh, yeah, a, a big platform for sharing information uh, in the humanitarian sector. So 
when you arrive on the website, you will see something like this. Uh, so it's in French because we work in French speaking countries, so all our data, are, yeah, it's in French. Uh, but you have to three windows. Uh, on the left, it's for biomass and water monitoring. So if you just, let's see if that works. Because mm. this is, I have to do the same. As him. Ah, with no sound, it's better. So if you go on the website and you click on the left, you will uh, go to the map. Uh, so. At the beginning, you see the water anomalies uh, map, but you can untick it on the left, and then you will see the biomass uh, anomalies for all the, the countries. Um, you can also uh, have a look to the, the profile that I've shown you before. So for that, you have, again, to tick on the left, and then you can click on any region on the map, and it will show the, um, the profile. For example, this is one for Senegal, uh, where you see the, the delay. Um, and there you can go and uh, download the data, so either the image, but also the, the raw data, uh, like uh, in the format that you want. Uh, and if we go back to the main page, and now we go to the third uh, windows, which is the, um, the data collected on the ground. So when we go there, you will see all our data collectors located in the in the region, and you can uh, again click click on one, and you get a summary of the situation. Again, it's in French, so sorry for that. Uh, and you can just have the the information on what is the water avail available, uh, and so on. We'll go back to that. So it's. Okay, so it's very good to collect data by SMS, uh, but if we want to give information to the elders that are on the field, we also need to find a solution to communicate with them without internet. So in Senegal, what we do, we, what we do is uh, radio diffusion. So every week when we have the information, uh, we do spot radio uh, to communicate with the pastoral communities that don't have access to internet. Uh, we do that in Senegal with a local company that's called Jocolante, uh, and we want to launch that also in Niger and uh, in Mali and in Burkina, because right now we are not doing it in uh, these countries. So where do we go from there? Um, so first, regarding the satellite imagery, uh, we are now working to change the system from one kilometer to 300 meter uh, spatial resolution. Uh, with Sentinel-3 and Probavi. Uh, so that's, yeah, we are working on that, so it will come quite soon, we hope. Uh, then rega regarding uh, field data collection, we have to increase the spe special coverage of our uh, data collectors, because as you have seen on the maps, for example, uh, in Mali and Burkina, we don't cover all the, the entire country, it's only a, a small part. Uh, so we want to increase that, and we also want to increase uh, radio transmission, because even if web mapping is cool, uh, as uh, Maxim also said, uh, in this country they cannot have access to that, so we need to, to try another way to, to diffuse the information. Um, third point, uh, we want to, to increase the use of our data, uh, thanks to a better diffusion and a better understanding. And uh, we also want to improve our services and the quality of data that we deliver. So don't hesitate to give us feedbacks, uh, either on the data or on the platform, on whatever uh, you want. So that's it. Thanks a lot. And if you have questions. I think we have Thanks. Uh, I have two questions. First, um, how do you get the position X and Y uh, when the user, the collector, send SMSs? Uh, which technology do you use? And uh, if you, if in some areas you have no internet connection, do you have a normal uh, mobile connection, even in remote areas? Yeah, so for, th for the first question, um, each site collects data every time on the same location. So 
I mean, when I go on the field to train the, the collector, we take the location and then that doesn't change. So that's easy. Uh, and we don't have that much mobile uh, network problem except in northern Mali. Uh, so in, in that region, we do the, the survey with, by calling. Uh, so yeah, but in Senegal, Burkina and Niger, it's, it's okay. Thank you for the nice uh, presentation. I'm uh, wondering a bit about uh, uh, your sustainability model of this. Uh, will it be program driven, project driven? And uh, the people who collect the data, are these volunteers? Are they paid for it? And you could also opt for a citizen science solution, but that also has advantages, disadvantages. Uh, so the people that collect data are, uh, in most of the case, uh, people from the state. So like, uh, yeah, people from the agency of the, of the livestock department in the States, uh, they are paid, but very small amount. So they receive uh, about 15 euro a month just for the sending of SMS. And as, as this system rely on simple phone, so they don't need smartphone. So we didn't have to, to buy smartphones for all the data collectors. So that makes it also more suitable because they just use their phone. So yeah, I think it's really, it's really low cost system. Uh, with 10,000 euro, you can go for, for one country for one year. So yeah, it's not that much. So the program wants to sustain that? Yeah, we want to keep, yeah. Yeah, we will find uh, the money to do it, hopefully. Thank you for the presentation. And about the data, do you think of using uh, Sentinel-2 data or Sentinel-1 radar data to increase uh, resolution to have better results on, on the water bodies? Um, yeah, but not now. Uh, so we need a really long archive. So we use pod vegetation and probavi uh, since 1998 to be able to build anomalies that are quite consistent. So no, Sentinel-2 does not offer that, that archive, So, but maybe one day. And but in, in this area, like the, the environment is, is quite uniform. So we don't either need to go really in, in that precision, because uh, yeah, 10 meter, it's also a huge amount of data. And so we don't have maybe the, infra yeah, like the infrastructure to deal with that. So first we will go to 300 meter and then we will see. Other questions? Thank you. I have several questions, but I will maybe just uh, ask uh, two. Um, from West Africa, I'm a geographer also, and I'm wondering a little bit about your work. How many percent of the pastoralism people do you think are using your system? Because based on my knowledge, since I'm agriculture, when I'm not uh, at office, you have a lot of problem with the pastoralism people. There are the ancestral route for migration. And if you fence your farm, you can be sure at night they will cut it, break it, if you have uh, a green grass in your farm. And most of people, when they are migrating, most of the time they follow the ancestral migration route. And the majority of the people having gold, they are living in the bush, not in big town where they are accessible, have access to a mobile phone. Because I have a lot of neighbors who are pastoralism people and is like that. Okay, so that's uh, maybe the, the main uh, problem of our system that is that now we, 
we transmit or we publish well the information to the top, so to WFP, FAO, states, and so on, but we don't go very well to directly to the pastoral communities. So we want to go and try to do that better and yeah. But right now it's really going up and not well going down. And then WFP, FAO takes action to try, for example, to deliver livestock uh, feeds or how do you how do you say that? Like yeah, the things to eat for the animals or to do like uh, medical assistance if needed and so on. But we don't really. We need to improve on that. Other questions? Are you looking to upgrade your system to include maybe smartphones and maybe have, um, you know, I know that you sent a message, they reply a message, but are you having like maybe an application that you can download or use? But the, pro the problem of that is the connection to internet and that the data collector will need smartphone. Uh, using the SMS? Uh, we don't know. Does it exist? Okay. Oh. Okay. But it's based on, on what? On ODK or? No, no not ODK. It's a new mobile application connect the uh, SMS protocol and the mobile application can push a message through the SMS. Okay. I don't know that. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot.